Well, sometimes Jesus has the most to say to people who perhaps we think are insignificant. And of all the seven cities that Jesus addresses, Thyatira was the least important and it gets the longest letter. Jesus wants to encourage and he also wants to challenge the Christians in Thyatira. It may not have been an important city, but it did have one distinct uh, attribute. That was that it produced this uh, famous purple dye. And we know that Lydia was from Thyatira and she traded in this. Associated with trade in Thyatira was also this guild. And the guilds in those days required certain commitments and loyalties, common meals where uh, two elements took place that Christians would find really difficult. When I say find really difficult, I mean that compromised them. Number one, they began uh, and ended with the sacrifice to a local god. And secondly, they were often places where they were kind of drunken and immoral feasts with all kinds of uh, unsavoury activities going on. In the letter to the Thyatirans, he says, the words of the Son of God who has eyes like flames of fire. You may think they're insignificant, but Jesus has got the eye on you. He's watching. He sees right through these people. He knows exactly what's going on there. He sees the inner workings of their hearts and he's speaking to them, calling to them. Now, in Thyatira, there was someone who is named Jezebel. Jezebel, of course, was the wife of King Ahab who opposed Elijah. And whether this is a literal name or just an appellation that's given because of the kind of character and the things that this person was doing is unclear. But Jezebel was operating in the church and was bringing false teaching and was leading people into immorality. Again, whether that's sexual immorality or just immorality is a symbol of idolatry or compromise isn't entirely clear but Jesus was not having any of it and although they may be a small church Jesus is concerned that they carry on and he says to them I will throw her onto a sickbed with those who commit adultery with her I will throw her into great tribulation her I will, and, and unless they repent of her works and it's interesting to note this use of the phrase great tribulation there again sometimes people think the great tribulation is something that's future but it was a very present reality for these people they would be and this is not god's people this is the uh, those who are compromised if they don't repent they're the ones who are going to fall into a great tribulation and a judgment that will come some gave a kind of aura to this false teaching they called it the deep things of satan but jesus knows what it really is it's just a web of deception that we must overcome to the one who conquers and keeps my works until the end i will give authority over nations he will rule them with a rod of iron as when earth pots are broken in pieces i think that's an allusion to the second psalm even as I myself have received authority to my father and I will give him the morning star. The morning star is a representation of that sweet light that rises in the heart of a believer because Jesus, not the planet Venus, is the true light who lightens everyone coming into the world. He's the light of the world. He's the hope of the nations. And we must keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. There are going to be temptations. There are going to be tribulations. But when we keep our eyes fixed on him, he will keep us till the very end.